Hi all, I have an exceptionally complex Mikhail Tal game to show you and it was against another very very dangerous dynamic player who we've seen actually some games of recently on the channel Alexander Kazimirovich Tolosh. Uh, there's some interesting bio about Tolosh just to remind you slightly. Uh, he was born in Russia in 1910, awarded the IM title in 1950. GM title in 1953, so that's three years before this game. The IMC title in 1965, and he was Leningrad champion in 1937, jointly, 38, 46, 47, jointly. An outstanding master of, an, of attacking combinations himself, he paid less attention to positional plan defense, and this affected his results. Uh, so his best result in a USSR championship was actually back in 1950. Uh, so this is the 19... Uh, 56 USSR championship so this is the big center stage for the best uh, players in the entire like USSR uh, uh, area so um Tal's on his way up this is four years before Tal became world chess champion it's just such a mind-bogglingly complicated game e4 for Mikhail Tal Tolish is not afraid of playing Sicilian defense and furthermore, we go into one of the most razor sharp variations going in the Sicilian defense. The so called poison pawn variation here after f4, queen b6. The bishop has left that c1 square protecting b2, and black is hitting not just d4 a bit, but b2. Okay, the knight's protected at the moment, but what about the pawn? Uh, it's, it's awkward. So, this is the poison pawn variation. White usually plays queen d2 here. Black takes. It's not just about taking a pawn though, it's weakening white on the dark squares, like the c3 square. Uh, so it's creating a really unbalanced position. Rook b1, queen a3. And now this razor sharp move e5. So Tal's really going for it here in this game, and black is playing, you know, rather provocative, provocatively as well. Just grabbing material you might think hasn't white got a massive lead in development but uh, there's opportunities for both sides black plays knight fd7 here now in this position knight e4 is played and you can start to see there's another pawn left for black to take here a2 as well as well as a pawn on e5 okay what we can address at the moment is that uh, instead of queen takes a2 like the game knight takes e5 there's a very strong move in this position for white uh, can you guess if i give you five seconds so there's a little trap to avoid for black if you're ever going to be crazy enough to play this opening with black then good luck to you but it's certainly definitely not about positional play which is why tollis didn't really uh make it into the highest echelons but he sure was playing sharp stuff even against Tal. but here yeah white's play white has knight b5 hitting the queen and also threatening queen d8 checkmate as well as knight c7 checkmate uh so this is hopeless for black actually one of the computer suggestions is that you just take you just play this and take the bishop yeah if bishop b4 is the best move that's no good so yeah this is this is fatal to take the pawn on e5 let's let's clear that one up at least so queen takes a2 was played and it's yeah it's a crazy position it's like two pawns down but the knights are nicely perched in the center white's got a massive lead in development there's also this f file that white's kind of opened up with a target on f7 we have now rook b3 and black plays a check here. Uh, let's examine an alternative. Um, knight takes e5. Again, knight b5 is not too bad, threatening all sorts of things. But f6, we have a position which will end up being good for white after all of this stuff. This is ending up good for white. Okay, so forget knight takes e5 again we have this check now queen a4 
uh, there's other interesting alternatives as well but uh, let's just go with the game now and this this was the moment this is also being analyzed by Kasparov by the way and stuff and um, there's also some background to this game here Mikhail Tal thought this was the moment to actually sacrifice uh, material this is the first major sacrifice here um, but it may not have been the best and I don't want to discredit our hero Mikhail Tal he was an evolving player in 1956 remember this is still four years uh, before his rapid you know ascension you know uh, to the top rapid rise to the top and he might not have played the best sack but the thing is even if he doesn't play the best sack uh, it's still dangerous what he plays usually um, Tal played Bishop b5 and this is really scary stuff uh, it turns out there might be something better here but um, let's leave that for the moment to tell the story of this game let's leave that for the moment so coming back to move 15 later let's just go with this this is very very scary stuff what does black actually do well <laughs> the queen attacked pin on the knight and it looks as though there's other forcing moves to consider all the time in this sort of position like knight takes e6 um so black took this knight takes b5 so what's the point well the point is knight c7 is threatened for a start that would be checkmate here with the bishop and knight but black is resourceful in this position he plays f6 so white's members sacrifice a piece and, and some pawns let's not forget the pawns uh so now a razor sharp position we see e takes f6 g takes f6 you might have a question here by the way uh in this position is it possible you might think for queen takes e4 well yeah but aren't you being greedy let's just check this out so queen takes e4 there's actually f takes g7 and look at black's pieces most of them on the back row do you really want to play this with black okay but one of them springs into life with check for example and then we have say rook g8 now this position actually you're vindicated here with black this might have actually been one of the better ways to play the position it looks initially as though black's getting blasted off the board right because uh, there's things like rook e6 and knight c7 to fault the king and queen but there's actually a resource here in, the, in this line uh this computer generated line by the way knight f6 so if we take the queen we get fault uh, but apparently this could end up being very good for black there and so if, if we play bishop g5 this is actually ending up as though black might actually survive this kind of position with best play so yeah uh okay with absolute best play it might have been possible may have been possible to take on e4 but um <laughs> you know you'd have to have uh an immense faith in in your defensive and counter-attacking resources to like take this probably you know caution i would take this knight on e4 and he did have a plus score so you need to be an incredibly resourceful player with great courage uh and faith probably to find the resources that you need to be able to cope after queen takes e4 yeah um so but black yeah he didn't take on e4 uh, i wouldn't say tolish is a chicken or anything he just maybe thought he was getting blown to bits in that line i mean with the king in the center intuitively you know how much material do you want to take you know he's already taken a piece he's already taken pawns does he want to take this knight in the center so he ends up taking here and we have rookie one so that knight's just staying on the board here but this one's now offered uh so again really dangerous to the king in the center 
and yeah why would you why why would anyone in their right mind want to play this line with black that might be a, uh, like a legitimate question i mean seriously seriously uh the the players were like i i i i'm wondering if a lot of the players were playing these lines as a sort of form of tactical training that they they knew they they weren't necessarily going to be world champion they wanted to have interesting games of kind of like tactical training yeah but this this sort of position it looks as though it's it's like totally on a knife edge if black uh took on g5 here then yeah <laughs> we have the, this sort of line check check and yeah bl the black king's gonna get thumped here quite severely uh in in these lines it's gonna get absolutely thumped and yeah this is not nice uh this this is pretty bad for black's king safety as you might expect uh so black actually came up with rook a6 to his credit it's one of the more sensible defenses and i think sparf has mentioned that this is one of the more sensible defenses um so we have bishop takes f6 knight takes knight takes and here it seems very very tempting to kind of virtually check the black king our intuition would say that rook f3 surely is the move to play almost like instantly why not play rook f3 isn't that really terrifying for black because it's like almost playing the check but it's not almost playing a check there's a tiny tiny difference when you play a check move if that was check the king would have to move it's not a check move and in fact rook f3 gives black a check move it turns out here there might be just a clear-cut way of just killing black in this position uh with knight e4 the move knight e4 instead because what it does it stops this queen h4 resource and it means that rook f3 is given a lot more oomph to it because there'll be queen g5 and rook f3 for example knight d7 queen g5 and now we're having rook f3 and it's slaughter time here it's going to be slaughter time in this line for example like that yeah it's it's all over really after knight e4 okay so it's it's a difficult position but it's so tempting we have instead this this queen h4 check being allowed uh and now we have king f1 e5 but uh the black king is still in severe trouble here off the check we have now discovered check from that rook uh and uh black played king g6 here another try of course to consider is king e7 uh check check and queen takes b8 is interesting probably more interesting for white than black uh so anyway so we have king g6 knight takes e5 check rook g3 check and yes the black king is in severe trouble the queen has to give herself up here so tell is vindicated <laughs> well or black's materialism has been punished in a way uh if king went to f6 here then queen d8 check is nasty then we can pick up the rook with check here so this is a bad position after queen takes g3 because white is not obliged to take and lose his queen he throws in another check here h takes g3 queen c7 and now knight takes d7 and white is scooping up back loads of material check rookie two and in fact in this complicated position black resigned yeah white is finally uh material up here in any case it doesn't matter about bishop takes e2 check and rookie eight check um i've checked this out i assure you this is this is now <laughs> this is now very good for 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 white uh one continuation knight e5 check say and then what we can do is just play with the queen and knight against the two rooks after 
this will be fine uh, just just play this position with uh, th this this kind of position is fine we've got the queen and knights so we're winning that so yeah it's an immensely uh, complex game but as I say it's almost as if the players have no fear uh, to play these lines the attitude has really changed like nowadays the professionalism of chess but within the USSR at the time uh, the notion of professional chess was I think I believe non-existent it was Fisher that really professionalized chess so maybe in a way they were just striving to create a regime of training everyone was playing really sharp stuff but Tolish is, is a sharp player anyway he was known as being a sharp razor sharp player um, in any case now let's go back to an interesting position so tell played this sacrifice here bishop b5 uh later sorry not in this line this bishop b5 in this position it turns out and apparently they they discovered this later even without modern engines there's there's um a very interesting alternative here to bishop b5 very very interesting i wonder if i i'll ask you as a, a tactical exercise it kind of echoes actually another tile game we've seen recently on the channel you might want to pause the video here to study position and and, and find what you'd think would be a really crushing murderous move in this position instead of bishop b5 which might actually improve believe it or not on, on tiles play which is of course dangerous uh, but there is a move here which seems absolutely crushing uh, without too much controversy so I'll let you pause the video if I give you five seconds starting from now okay there was actually knight takes e6 this immediately threatens knight c7 checkmate um now if queen takes here yeah so that's checkmate so basically if f takes we have knight d6 check and the point here is this is really dangerous for queen e7 and it doesn't even matter about rook f8 check believe it or not the king can actually go here to g3 this is the best place for the king other places of the king might offer black some chances with checks wherever the, the, the checks are minimized let's let's have that as a generalization before plunging into other stuff king g3 what does black play here uh if knight f6 then we take here and now can you see a move in this position which is really crushing five seconds bishop e2 because then we have bishop h5 check and this this is just a murderous uh position because we're going to be using the f file on rook f7 that would be hopeless it's starting to be absolutely hopeless here uh i believe at minimum we're going to watch out for queen h4 check though so i'm not going to try and say something improv i'm not going to improvise this this is not entirely in my variation notes but i don't want to walk embarrassingly into a mate in one so i would say in this position bishop takes f7 check and then we're going to run with checks to avoid any naughty business from black and and i i believe we're just we're just going to mate black here yeah black's just going to get mated without too much fuss as long as we keep the checks up there's going to be no lethal check to the white king on g3 so yeah i think so th this is the main line noted anyway bishop e2 queen d7 actually check queen c5 this is a crushing position for example like this this is just murderous for black this position here yeah so it turns out on closer inspection that at move 15 there might have been a major improvement but yeah Tal worked it out after with with other people that knight takes e6 here is is murderous I and mean, it's a very important i believe it's a very important pattern in these sort of positions uh, to consider I mean we've seen it at least once in another towel game um, yeah 
another thing by the way about this uh, so we have Queen a4 so Knight takes e6 might have been major improvement I mean the whole the whole climate of the position here, it's like a tactical feast compared to say you know variation of the Berlin defense you can endlessly analyze uh, these positions yeah but the, the tactical theme here seems to be about when we play a move like Knight takes e6 what are we doing it's it's fascinating to consider that we're actually weakening this diagonal and that forms like part of a, a, a mating net for the black uh, king in these lines so there's knight c7 on, on queen takes e4 uh, so yeah this this is just absolutely fascinating uh, this this mechanism here that we just need to get on this diagonal we kind of got our mating there but I mean the fact that it works allowing this check on on fa is is remarkable but um, <laughs> yeah okay so that's that's the discovery that tell and others made after the game that in fact he had a, a you know knight takes e6 but you know so we we pick up these patterns from experience and from post-mortem of, of games as well but i'm pretty sure you know tell has played this kind of stack with that mechanism in another game we've, we've covered just recently in any case so a fascinating game but uh th these guys are playing very very interesting chess back then i've got to say that i think we can all agree on that comments or questions on youtube and likes appreciated. Thanks very much.